A few years ago when I was heavily involved in politics, I discovered, well, I really didn't discover it, but it came to light, that uh, I was not what most people would consider a natural leader. For example, if I were in a group of like-minded people, you know, party members, um, I would not stand out. If I were tried to talk to the group, you know, socializing, uh, there was nothing particularly special there. People would tend to gravitate away from me, not toward me. So in that sense, you would say, nah, I was not a leader. And of course, I understood that because, well, that's the way it's always been. But at the same time, during the, my tenure working in politics, I started this thing called the Writers Bureau. And what we would do is every week we would send out an article to virtually every news uh, organization in the state, primarily newspapers, and uh, many of those people would publish what we sent them as uh, as uh, op-eds, opinion pieces. So we were getting a lot of free publicity. And something else that I did in addition to that was I started this little tabloid newspaper and it did uh, fairly well. So the question is, you know, I had these innovative ideas that were implemented, but I wasn't a leader or was I? So what, what I'm coming to terms with here is there is a difference between and I know this is a matter of semantics, but there's a difference between a leader and an influencer. So what we normally call a leader would probably better be called an influencer. Now, you know, we're not going to change the language just to suit me. I understand that. But we still need to understand that sometimes our terms are a little bit, uh, a little bit inaccurate. Because I would say that people with Asperger's syndrome, by and large, are not influencers in the sense that we don't influence the herd, the group. When we are in the group, when we are amongst them, we can talk, we can share ideas, and people pretty much ignore us because we don't have that quality of, uh, of the alpha. You know, the alpha male, typically in primates or in some species, it's an alpha female. But um, nah, we just don't have that type of leadership ability. Now, there may be some exceptions if there are. I've never seen one. I don't know of any. All right, so if we're, if we're not influencers, are we truly leaders? Well, I would say we are because, well, number two, we need to understand that there is a difference between an influencer, that's the person we normally think is a leader, and someone who is a trailblazer. So a person with Asperger's syndrome would better be considered a leader in the trailblazer sense. That is to say, all right, think of the early days, um, well, the 19th century, even the uh, 18th century of the expansion of the United States, where these people were, I mean, some of them literally trailblazers. They would go uh, west, which is now Midwest, but they would head west and uh, they would create trails. They would sometimes they follow Indian trails. They would... Uh, uh, set up homesteads, they would set up communities, they were true trailblazers, but to do that, they had to leave the herd, the community in the east, you know, on the, um, you know, the eastern shore, the area, Philadelphia, whatever, New York, uh, what is now Washington, D.C., Boston, they had to leave those areas and head west. So they were leaders in the sense that people followed them, but it wasn't immediate leadership where they were leaders like uh, Benjamin Franklin. Rather, Aspies are leaders like Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. So they're different type of leaders. So to say, to say that people with Asperger's syndrome are not leaders, I think, is to misunderstand the meaning of the term. And uh, we just use what uh, most people think of as leader as somebody who has immediate influence over this group. All right, so what, what really is the difference? Well, a leader is necessarily part of the crowd. That is to say, an influencer. The, the person that we would normally refer to as a leader is part of the crowd, an influencer. Where the trailblazer, the other kind of leader, or I would say a true leader, is detached from the crowd. He is the true leader by, nece by necessity. Somebody has to get away from the crowd and discover something new because basically the crowd itself, the herd, it's uh, doing the same thing over and over and over again, and somebody leads them in a circle. 
So think of dancing in a circle and somebody leads. I know they have done tests, you know, with little kids. And uh, uh, one kid would uh, they'd dance and play and they would sit back and observe and notice that there's always one kid who tends to be the leader and says, let's do this and everybody would do this. That is an influencer. A trailblazer is somebody who says, I don't want to do this, I'm going to leave the class, go do something else. You know, that would be a trailblazer and they probably get themselves in trouble. And often uh, trailblazers, people with Asperger's syndrome, we find ourselves rejected by the herd, rejected by the crowd, because we don't really have a place there. There is no place in the herd, in the crowd, for a trailblazer. That is a problem for Aspies, but I think it shouldn't be, because we need to understand that that is a very strong quality. We have a place in society, and our place is outside society. Does that make sense? So we have a place in society like Daniel Boone did, like Davy Crockett did. We are the trailblazers. We are the pioneers. We are the settlers. We are the ones who go climb over the mountain while everyone else sits comfortably in the uh, valley. And in the valley, they have, uh, they have their influencer or their influencers. They stay with the troop or the group. They have the alpha. We're not alphas at all. We are, I don't want to say superior to alphas. We're just different. We're just totally different. We're the ones who go out in the wilderness again and blaze the trails for others to follow. And how do you define a leader? Well, I would define a leader as anybody who has followers. That's how you define a leader. So I think there are different kinds of leaders. I'm repeating myself, but there are different kinds of leaders just for emphasis. And that is trailblazers and influencers. We're not influencers. We tend to be trailblazers. So the influencer relies on the herd. You can't be an influencer without people to influence, right? So you've got to be there in the herd influencing them. But if you're a trailblazer, you break contact with the herd. So you really can't rely on the herd. You've got to rely on yourself. So you become a loner. And sometimes people in the herd look at you as being a little bit different. You know, you have a nose, you got eyes, you got ears, you got all the, th you may dress funny, but you got all the parts that they have, but still there's something different there. So they, they develop this us versus them, and we are the them, and they are the us, and so they break contact, which is, uh, we think is a bad thing, because we like to belong, everyone does. But really, we need to consider that that may be a good thing, that they are breaking contact with us, so that we necessarily need to go out and do our trailblazing. So one thing that I've learned is this, is to embrace the disconnect because it is, uh, I think it's vitally important to the herd to have somebody that's out there, you know, doing some uh, trailblazing, you know, finding out where the food is, finding out where the inventions are, finding out the newest technology. And if you don't have somebody doing that, uh, society never advances, it gets stuck. So. When people are free, I've noticed that's when the uh, trailblazers really take over. That is when society advances. Now, I was looking at a photograph on uh, social media of the inside of Charles Lindbergh's airplane. You know, he flew this airplane from the United States to France transatlantic, first time anyone had made a solo flight. I was looking at that airplane, and I noticed it didn't have, didn't have a windshield, didn't have a front window. He had side windows, but he didn't have a front window. Instead, he had a little periscope, you know, he'd look in. So if he wanted to look forward, which I guess he didn't have to because he's flying by their uh, rudimentary uh, instruments, that was less than 100 years ago. I mean, that uh, compared to human history, which goes back um, countless millennia, that's our time. This advanced very quickly. Why? Well, because the um, trailblazers were given a free reign. And because of that, because of people, which, which is very typical of Aspies, not all these people obviously were autistic, but because of that, society has uh, technology as just mushroom. Sometimes, uh, say mushroom, sometimes that's uh, for the better, but sometimes it's not, but usually it's for the better. I don't know about you, but um, I don't care to go back to riding a horse and pulling a buggy. If you want to do that, I'm perfectly okay with it. Just, you know, get over to the side of the road. That's all I ask. 
So, uh, yeah, I like the technology. I like the advancement in healthcare. I like the fact that we are able to feed the entire human race if we want to, where before the greatest fear was starvation. Now the greatest fear is obesity. We've come that far. So, yeah, who are you going to give credit to? The leaders? You know, the, um, the influencers, the alphas, or are you going to give credit to the people who went out and blazed the trails, the Charles Lindberghs? Seems to me that the credit goes to the Charles Lindbergh, Lindberghs. So in that sense, I would say that we are the true leaders. So we need to embrace that disconnect from the herd. So it seems that we are missing the herd instinct. Now, there's something about us that, yeah, we like to be accepted. We want to be wanted, but we just can't be. And because of that, we have no choice but to be objective. And that's a positive thing. Because the herd tends to think like the herd because the group wants to be accepted. Everybody in the group wants to be accepted by the group. So the last thing you want to do is to be rejected by the herd. So as a result of that, people with Asperger's syndrome tend to be clear thinkers. Talking about politics and religion, sociology, ideology, it seems to me that philosophers tend to be people who have Asperger's syndrome because they're not influenced by herd think. And when I see people, when I see people who are uh, call themselves Aspies, and I'm not questioning that they are, but I don't know, and they seem to be bound to this group think of whatever the prevailing uh, fad is or the prevailing uh, ideology is, I'm wondering if you know there's something missing in their in their what would we call this their Aspiness, you know, uh, because typically we won't buy into that. We tend, you know, form follows function for people with Asperger's syndrome. That often is why people think we dress funny, because the way they dress is quite frankly stylish, but it's not very practical. Where we choose practicality over style, they think that's weird. We look at them and we think, okay, why are you wearing that? You know, uh, because everyone else is wearing it, that doesn't make sense to us. So we tend to be objective in our thinking. Now, we also, uh, another benefit of this is we're not dragged around by the crowd, you know? So uh, people who are in the herd, in the crowd, they are being bullied by each other, and they don't even know it. You know, you see a flock of birds, one takes off, they all take off. They're, they are influencing each other. I don't know who that first bird is, but that is the influencer. You see a pack of uh, any kind of animal, you know, wildebeest or a pack of, um, pack of wolves or whatever there is, a hierarchy there there is an influencer that is considered the leader but at some point one of those wolves particularly uh when they have you know pups in the den they'll get out i think they call it a den they'll get out and they go hunting sometimes you got to have a hunter who will leave the um who will leave the town leave the tribe leave the community and go out and do something new well who are the hunters typically those would be people with Asperger syndrome in our day and age. Now, because of that, there's another benefit of being a true leader, being a trailblazer, and that is we get to see things from a perspective that others cannot see. We get to see the potential or the lack of potential. So, you know, think of uh, Lewis and Clark. You know, they saw sites that nobody ever saw. You ever been to the Grand Canyon? Have you ever wondered what it was like for the first Europeans to see that or the first Indians who saw that ever? Never saw it before. Have you ever gone to the ocean and you saw it for the first time? So someone who is a trailblazer, they see things that others do not see. They see the potential. These are the ones who uh, find the gold and then everyone else follows and you have a gold rush. We tend to be the true leaders, but nobody thinks of us as that. They just think we're a little quirky because we're outside the herd. And uh, you know what? When I was younger, that was a problem for me because I wanted to belong, but the older I get, the more mature that I get, nearly 70 years old, you know, the more I embrace being independent, the more I embrace being objective, the more I embrace being away from the herd, away from the crowd, because uh, I like, uh, yeah, I like being a trailblazer. See those two rectangles on the screen? Just click on one of those. We'll keep talking. If not, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you all later.